Considering the Capitalist 272 for treatment of hair loss, any suggestions? I was diagnosed with androgenic alopecia a month ago after a very stressful year last year, 2015, after my mom passed away. Currently on minoxidil 2% treatment after a biopsy was done. I want to know if the laser cap Capitalist 272 would be a good choice to regrow some hair, as my dermatologist said I have miniature hair follicles. The cells are healthy, I have no medical condition like lupus, etc. The most thinning spot is on the crown of my head. I am 36 years old. Thank you for your question. You're 36 years old, you've submitted a single photo, and you describe in detail um, a situation where you were diagnosed with uh, androgenetic alopecia after a biopsy was performed um, by a dermatologist who said you had miniaturized hairs and that uh, you had a, a lot of hair loss um, after the unfortunate event of uh, your mother passing away. So you're asking whether to use a particular uh, laser device to help you treat your hair loss. Well, I can certainly give you uh, my perspective. I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic surgeon practicing in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. Hair transplant and hair loss has been a big part of my uh, practice. And I'm also the founder of Trichostem Hair Regeneration Centers. We've developed a non-surgical alternative to hair loss, which is particularly very effective for the treatment of male and female pattern hair loss, uh, also known as androgenetic alopecia. So I could certainly help you kind of orient yourself in understanding um, what role different therapies have. You did mention in your question that you are using minoxidil. In this country, the, uh, there is basically, from the medical perspective, the use of minoxidil for female pattern hair loss, as well as transplant surgery. There is uh, some um, perception of value of the use of low-level laser light therapy. However, in my experience, I have not found low-level laser light therapy to be of any value. Uh, we have um, had professional level uh, devices where we sit patients under this uh, device and have them sit there for prescribed periods of time. And this was long before we developed hair regeneration treatment. And I was always in a, in a questioning whether or not there was value. We didn't see the hair thickening. We, we would question whether or not maybe the, the laser light therapy was maybe maintaining hair presence. I can tell you that a lot of my colleagues uh, share my opinion, and um, there are, of course, many colleagues who offer and sell these products, and I think they're doing their best to do whatever is possible to help people with, with hair loss. In, in your situation, you have to also differentiate two um, entities that you are dealing with. One is pattern hair loss, androgenetic alopecia. This is where hair grows in and then sheds and then grows in thinner, otherwise referred to as hair thinning. So with every subsequent growth cycle, the hair gets thinner. Now that is genetic. It, um, it is a specific pattern that is the eventual disappearance of hair. Now that's different from telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium or, or, or shock related hair loss, where you had an emotional trauma and then you lost hair. This is when, if you learn about the basic growth cycles of hair, there's antigen, which is an active growing phase, catagen, a transitional phase, and telogen, which is a resting phase where hair sheds out and then the hair follicle remains in the skin, waiting to grow back, usually in three to four months. What happens with stress is a, good, a significant percentage of hairs will go prematurely into the telogen phase. Normally, more than 90% of hairs are in the active growing phase, the antigen phase. So when that happens, for someone who has androgenetic alopecia, it often actually reveals or exposes the presence of hair thinning. Many times people will say that after this event, my hair just stopped growing. It just, and what they were actually experiencing was the combination like you have of 
telogen effluvium with hair thinning. Now, with understanding my position with the laser, laser devices, I can tell you that in our practice, we've developed a treatment called hair regeneration. And with hair regeneration, we're using a combination and a method and a system that we've developed over years of clinical practice, combining platelet-rich plasma, which is derived from your own blood, with a cellular matrix, our extracellular matrix, that is used for wound healing. This was based on an observation we made years ago that in helping, trying to help people with hair transplant surgery, thinning hairs actually became thicker. So we've developed a protocol and system based on a variety of uh, variables, including age, gender, hair loss pattern, etc., that we've developed over um, several years of treating patients who come to us from all over the world. We have hundreds and hundreds of patients a year, so we have a, a good system in place. Basically, with hair regeneration, we, are, we have been able to establish that the hair thinning process stops, there is reactivation of hairs that are, have not been growing, and that's because the telogen phase of a thinning hair actually gets longer, and it appears not to grow, and then if it does grow, it grows back thinner. And we, the hair that is thinning will shed out, and actually, instead of growing back thinner, will grow back thicker. And so with more than five years of data, we've been able to establish a sustainability of a single injection. Now, we have protocols where we do a second injection in some patients after one year. It depends a lot on how I customize the treatment because even though we have a lot of data on a lot of people, we still treat every patient as an individual. This may be an opportunity for you to learn more about this additional treatment. I can tell you that almost everybody who comes to us at some point of their journey of treating their hair loss has at some point bought a laser light, low level laser light therapy device. They're marketed very aggressively and I think it is still up to, uh, up to um, our peers to determine any true clinical benefit. Um, I wouldn't, I, I'm not going to debate whether or not the studies showed benefit, but I would like to, you know, as a clinician, as a surgeon, I like to basically uh, see things with my own eyes, and if it's not obvious and significantly improved before and after treatment with the laser, well, and then I think that it, it, I'm still not well fully convinced. In, in spite of that, all of that issue, frankly, we don't actually need the laser. We, we are very successful with hair regeneration. And even if someone were to need another treatment with, based on our observations clinically, it is sustainable if someone needed an injection every three to five years. So I, I, I think that you can learn more and do some research about the treatment like ours um, and also learn about the true efficacy of low-level laser light therapy. Look for resources where there is no bias, where the person offering it has not been involved in a study or whether or not um, it is well received because ultimately there's no harm, but you have to see whether it's going to be worth the investment and the time. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. And thank you for your question.